Preacher Rick with you. Live at Five with the Word of God. Keeping Yourselves. Keeping Yourselves is the title of our sermon today. We'd like to read to you in the little book of First John. In your New Testament. The last chapter, which is chapter 5. And we're going to read to you starting at verse 18. To read the last four verses. Maybe three of them. Maybe four. For we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Now, I'm going to stop just for a second there. And I want to go over that before I go any farther. Now, we also know that none of us live above sin, don't we? And we know that sin can come at any time if we're not careful. But there is a sin unto death. And that. And if you read ahead of these scriptures, you can put that in context and understand all that. Uh, there's a difference between having a sinful nature to deal with and deliberately living in sin. And that's what it's talking about here. I know that since I've got saved, I've never, ever, ever wanted to sin. I'm sure that I've had to repent. I'm sure that I've messed up. And I'm sure that I've fallen and had to get back up. And, but I've never had a desire to be a sinner again and to live deliberately in sin. Now, it says, We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is, he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. And that's what I want to look at, keeping yourself. And that's where we get our title today. And that wicked one touches him not. Now, we know that Satan is a powerful foe. And we know that he is out to deceive the very elect, if it were possible. He's like a roaring lion seeking us. But the Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. And we need to resist him. And we need to pray that God will use us in a way, thank God forever, uh, that will always be overcoming evil uh, and living a sanctified, dedicated, consecrated life. Uh, uh, thank God that the devil uh, cannot touch. Uh, and it says right here in verse 18, And that wicked one toucheth him not. Uh, thank God. Uh, and we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness, it says in verse 19. Uh, uh, we know that we're of God because we uh, look around us and we see the wickedness of the world. And boy, uh, if you can't see it today, uh, uh, you're very blind uh, uh, because it's very uh, uh, real and very big in the world today. Wickedness uh, is abounding. Uh, I will throw this in. Uh, thank God for the scripture. It says where sin doth abound, uh, uh, grace doth much more. Uh, so the love of God abounds even greater. Uh, uh, and you know, really, the darker the night, the brighter the light. Uh, uh, we know that. Uh, a candle's not very bright till you're in a real dark room and it's lit. Uh, and, and that's where we are today with the gospel. Uh, it's very bright because wickedness has uh, overtaken the world we're living in and darkness uh, is really big today. Uh, uh, but I'm glad for the word of God, aren't you? Thank God for Jesus. Uh, where would we be without him? Let's read on in verse 20. Uh, it says, we know uh, uh, that the Son of God has come. Uh, we know this. Uh, all Christians know this. We know that he came. Uh, uh, he was uh, 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 hung on the cross and buried. Uh, and glory to God, resurrected, came out of the tomb uh, on the third day and is the first of the resurrections. Uh, uh, bless his name. Uh, we know that the Son of, uh, of God has come and hath given us... Uh, and understanding. Uh, uh, he has given us, he has opened our eyes, opened our hearts uh, uh, to the truth. And with, you know, uh, he is the truth. And the Bible says to know the truth uh, and the truth will set you free. Uh, and whom the Son sets free uh, is free indeed. And I can testify of that today uh, that I've been made free, glory to God, uh, from the bondage of sin. Uh, I'm no longer a slave to it. Uh, and that wicked one can't touch me. Uh, uh, why? Because I no longer want to live in sin. Uh, uh, thank God I'm glad uh, that whom the Son sets free is free indeed, uh, and I've been made free. Uh, free from what, preacher? Free uh, from the captivity uh, of living in sin and being pulled into uh, the depths of hell. Uh, and that's exactly where sin takes us. Uh, uh, so let's read on uh, in that verse. Uh, thank God. Uh, and uh, that we may know him that is true, and we uh, 
are in him that is true so we are in the lord jesus christ uh, even in his son jesus christ uh, this is the true god and eternal life bless god forever uh, that's the word of god and that's what uh, uh, we are preaching today is the word of god uh, and i'm glad i uh, uh, thank god uh, that we can keep ourselves uh, keeping ourselves from uh, that wicked one keeping ourselves from the sins of this world uh, keeping ourselves true uh, uh, to the christianity that christ uh, has given us uh, to the born again experience uh, uh, to the uh, uh, repentant way uh, that he has set before us. Bless his loving uh, and holy name. Uh, that's why I preach every day. Uh, that's why I sing the glory down. Uh, that's why I testify of his goodness. Uh, uh, because uh, I want to keep myself pure and clean uh, uh, from the sins of this world. Uh, the wickedness that I see all around me. Uh, uh, because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt uh, that I've been born again. I know that Jesus Christ has come. I know that he came into my heart. I know that he came into this world. He was born in that manger. And bless his loving and holy name, he conquered death, hell, and the grave for me. And by the grace of God, I intend to keep pressing toward the mark. I thank God and letting my light so shine before men. Why? Because this is the only opportunity opportunity uh, I'll ever have to help others uh, uh, see the light while I'm here. Uh, uh, we only have a short space of time on earth, uh, and it's up to us to redeem the time, uh, uh, for the days are evil, the Bible says. Uh, uh, so as I've shared many times in many sermons, uh, the only way we can redeem time uh, is by using it wisely. Uh, uh, you can't bottle it up. Uh, you have to take the time God has allotted you, uh, and you use it wisely, thank God, uh, being a soul winner, uh, getting uh, the gospel out by the life that you live, uh, uh, thank God. Uh, this is the true God in eternal life. He said, uh, and he added right in the last verse uh, of First John, he said, little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. Uh, uh, so uh, God inspired John to right there at the end of that letter uh, to throw that in. Uh, uh, so that has a lot to say because he's already talking about how we uh, are no longer sinners, how that we uh, sin not because we don't want to. Uh, uh, so what he's saying here uh, all of a sudden is uh, uh, to uh, keep yourself there. Uh, you have to beware of idols. Uh, you have to understand that anything we put before God becomes sin. Uh, and so he said, little children, uh, keep yourself from idols. Amen. What is an idol? Uh, an idol is anything uh, that uh, takes up your worship time, anything that you worship. Uh, and it's so uh, uh, very important to you uh, that you can even, if you're not careful, put it before God. Uh, so John understood that and he realized that. Uh, and he threw that in uh, before he ended this letter. God uh, inspired him to say that. Uh, so we need to learn uh, to keep ourselves from allowing anything uh, to come before God. Uh, God must be first. Uh, uh, he is a jealous God. Uh, and he's not going to take second place in our life. Uh, he is not going uh, uh, to play play the role of a spare tire. Uh, I've said many times this, too. Uh, the Bible says he's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. Uh, uh, thank God. Uh, he's the gears, thank God, in other words, uh, uh, that control and run our life. Uh, uh, this old heart won't beat one beat uh, without his approval. Uh, uh, that old blood won't circulate one time uh, except God lets it. Uh, God won't give me the breath of life one breath uh, uh, except uh, uh, that he sees fit to. And I praise him for every breath I take, uh, for every beat of my heart, uh, uh, for every uh, uh, a moment that he gives me on his green earth. Uh, it's a precious gift from above, uh, and we must use our time wisely. Uh, uh, thank God we must, uh, uh, as it, we read uh, and told you the title of our sermon, keeping ourselves. Uh, uh, and there in verse 18, and I'll read it again, uh, uh, 
Uh, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, uh, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. Uh, uh, thank God. Uh, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Uh, I'm glad to report to you uh, uh, that Satan is strong, uh, but God is stronger. Uh, and if God be for you, who can be against you? Uh, I've shared this too. Uh, God and one is the majority. Uh, when you have God on your side, you've got everything you need. Uh, bless his loving and holy name. Uh, thank God for Jesus. Uh, uh, this is Preacher Rick. Uh, and I realize uh, uh, that our time is about over in one more day. Uh, but let me tell you today, uh, you've got to keep yourself uh, because your time uh, is running out swiftly. All of our time. Uh, the Bible says our life is even like unto a vapor uh, that appears for a little while, then it vanishes away. Uh, we understand uh, uh, that our time is very limited on earth. Uh, and if you'll just hide that in your heart, uh, if you'll just realize what God is telling you uh, here in this sermon about keeping yourself, uh, you'll keep yourself from a lot of harm and a lot of sin that later on uh, you'll be so glad you did. Uh, uh, you'll thank God that you stayed away from the sins of this world. Uh, uh, you'll be glad, uh, uh, thank God, uh, uh, that you knew the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and the pardon and remission of sin that he has for all of us. Uh, bless his loving and holy name. Thank God for Jesus. This is Preacher Rick signing off one more time. Until the next time, we love you all. Push that share button. Share it with as many as you can. Bye-bye.